a moment, you'll hear James Stewart as the Six Shooter, just one of many fine programs brought to you each week on NBC. Tomorrow night, there's top comedy entertainment with the Bob Hope Show, the Phil Harris, Alice Faye Show, and Can You Top This with Senator Ford. Bob Hope delivers rapid-fire comedy routines, while Phil Harris and Alice Faye bring both mirth and music. It's a great Friday night lineup of comedy programs, all of them heard only on NBC. James Stewart as the Six Shooter. The man in the saddle is angular and long-legged. His skin is sun-dyed brown. The gun in his holster is gray steel and rainbow mother of pearl. Its handle unmarked. People call them both the Six Shooter. The NBC Radio Network presents James Stewart as the Six Shooter, a transcribed series of radio dramas based on the life of Britt Ponsett, the Texas plainsman who wandered through the Western territories, leaving behind a trail of still remembered legends. <laughs> This was my first trip into Powder Creek for, oh, oh, three months, I suppose. Working the spring roundup for Bar Y had been keeping me pretty busy, and there hadn't been any special reason for coming to town, but I figured it was about time to make an appearance. Scar's saddle was showing a lot of wear and tear, and, well, it, my own outfit didn't exactly look like it had just arrived fresh from the mail order house. You know, pants were getting a little thin around the seat, and uh, it was a pretty big hole in the sleeve of my jacket. I'd tried to patch it up, but I hadn't done a very good job. So I left Scar at the livery stable and headed over to Ethan Green River's general store. I am getting another jacket, a new pair of breeches, shirt or two. And I'd probably be able to find out what's been going on in the town while I was at it. Ethan usually managed to keep up on the latest Powder Creek happenings. Well, the store hadn't changed much. Everything seemed to be about the same. And Ethan, he hadn't changed much either. He, he must be almost 65 by now. He sure didn't look that old, though. Standing there by the pickle barrel, munching on a great big fat juicy dill. Howdy, Ethan. Well, well, well. I've been wondering when you was going to honor us with your presence, Britt. That's so. all. Yes, sir. I was remarking about you just this morning. To old Miss Bennett. When she come in to get some yardage for a new dress, I said to Miss Ben, about time for the six shooter to be coming into town. He sort of overdue, I said. Overdue? Uh, what are you talking about, Ethan? Well, there's milk for you, for one thing. Letter. Uh, somebody in uh, Topeka, Kansas, from the looks of the envelope. No, oh, it must be from Aunt Emma. She lives in Topeka. Oh, she does, eh? Well... Here you are, Britt. Thanks. Nice. According to the postal rules, I should have sent it back when you didn't show up, but I figured I could stretch your point. <laughs> well, ain't you going to read it? Oh, oh, sure, sure. Let's oh, see. oh, my. Oh, that pickle sure is bitter. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Must have got too much vinegar in this batch. Hang on. You know, to this, I ain't very fond of dills, anyhow. Don't know why I keep on eating them. Holy smoke. Hmm? Is something the matter, Britt? Holy well. Oh, well, it's a letter from Aunt Emma. She's, she's, she's coming out here to Powder Creek. Oh, going to pay you a little visit, huh? Uh, now, ain't that nice? No, it's more than just a visit, Ethan. Oh? No, no, she's figuring on settling down here. Well. She, she aims to make this her home, though. Uh-huh, well, uh, there's lots worse places a body can live. No, no, but, but she expects me to live with her. She's... She says she's going to keep house for me. Well, Holy smoke. No, that's real considerate of her. Real considerate. No, indeed. no, but I appreciate her, her wanting to look after me, but well, well, doggone it, Ethan. Now, you know I couldn't settle down, not permanently. I'm used to traveling around and living alone and bunking wherever my fancy strikes. You know yeah, that. Sure, but uh, maybe it's good for you to take root someplace, huh? You, you know what they say, Britt. Rolling Stone gathers no more. Living alone does have its disadvantages. Oh, you know? well, now, you're a fine one to talk. Well. I haven't noticed you making any effort to acquire a family. Oh, now, look here. I'm a lot older than you are. Too old to change my ways. But you're still a young buck. You ought to be sort of a uh, pliable like. 
Yes, sir, I think you ought to take your hand up on this here offer. Huh? You don't think anything of the kind. Yeah, you do. No, you do not. You're just trying to get my goat, that's all. Not at all. I know you. I'm, well, I'll just write Aunt Evan tonight, and I'll thank her for what she wants to do for me. I, but I'll just explain. I, that I, I, I'll just I, explain I, I, to her and tell her. I, I hmm? kind of doubt that a letter would reach her in time to hit her off, Britt. What? Yeah, yeah. that one she sent you has been here for several weeks now. Oh, yes, well... Well, I guess I'll just send her a telegram, then. That line out of Powder Creek is still working, isn't it? Oh, yeah, yeah. Ain't been a single breakdown lately, not since them Apaches headed south back into their own territory. Yeah, well, that's what I'll do, then. I'll just telegraph her. Uh, well, I um, kind of doubt that a telegram would do much good, either. Huh? Seeing as how your and M is already in Powder Creek. Yeah, well, I'll send her one, anyway. I, 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 <laughs> what? <laughs> yes, sir. She got here a week ago last Tuesday. Come in on the Saturday. I uh, brung a whole load of furniture, too. Well, now, now hold on, Ethan. Now, you're not serious. Well, you're joking. Well, no, I'm not. Just you take a stroll over to the old Mac Dennis house. You, you know, on the corner behind the bank? Uh-huh, yeah. Well, yes, sir. Your aunt rented the place right after she arrived. Must be all moved in by now. Well, I just don't know what to say. I understand she's got your room all fixed up waiting for you. My room? Well, that's what she's here for, ain't it? To look after you. Well, I don't need any looking after Well, maybe Ethan. not, maybe not, but it appears your Aunt Emma's got other ideas. Seems to be a real understanding, lady, though. Says it's all right for you to keep Sky if your heart's set on it. Is she, to keep Sky? What? Well, she probably don't care much for horses herself, you see. Now, you just listen to me, Ethan Green River. I'm not going to live here on that, what a... I mean, I never asked Aunt Emma to go... She's... Shouldn't take it upon herself to, without my, with a, the old Mac Dennis house, you said. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah, that's the one. Ain't very fancy, but from here on, it's uh, going to be home sweet home. Hey, Britt? Yeah, I'll just see about that. <laughs> Sakes, how you've grown, Britt. Oh, now, now, Aunt Em, now, I, I had my full growth the last time you saw me. I, I was 25 years old. Well, now, it seems to me you've shot up some since then. <laughs> oh, not much flesh on you, though. Fact is, you're just plain skinny. Yeah, well, I reckon being so tall make me a little thinner than I really am, you know, sort oh, of appear to be. Your father was just as tall as you are, but... He must have been a good 20 pounds heavier. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Oh. Yes, ma well, we'll put some flesh on those bones of yours. A couple of good home-cooked meals, and you'll start filling in. I, uh, yes, yes. You, uh, you like the house, Fred? Uh, yes. It seems real comfortable. Well, I haven't quite finished unpacking yet, and some of the big pieces have got to be moved. I was waiting for you to give me a hand. Yes, I'll be glad to, Aunt Anne. Uh, your room's right over there if you uh, want to take a look at it. Oh, uh, well... So go on, uh, Britt, go on. Oh, you needn't be afraid I fixed it up real frilly or anything like that. Oh, no, no, I wasn't worried about that. I... Well? Uh, oh, I... It looks fine. It's just fine. Just take a good feel of that bed. Hmm? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'll bet you don't get a soft mattress like that in the bunkhouse where you've been sleeping. Uh, yeah, no. No, we sure don't. Uh, I'm working on a patch quilt for it. Started before I left Kansas. Expect I'll have it finished up in a week or so. Well. Uh, <laughs> uh, now, Adam, uh, before you go to too much trouble. Yes, Rich. Uh, you see, you see, I I didn't know you were coming to Powder Creek. Uh, yes, Mr. Green River told me you hadn't been in to pick up my letter. You must have been kind of surprised to find out I was already here. I was practically flabbergasted, yes. I. Uh, whatever made you decide to come west? I'll tell you all about it while I'm fixing supper. Come on out in the kitchen. Uh, uh, yes, ma'am. Oh, shucks. I was going to have a real fancy meal for you first night in your new home, but you didn't give me enough warning. So I'll just have to warm up yesterday's pot roast if that's all right. Oh, there's nothing I like better. Oh, there's some potatoes in that sack. Would you mind peeling a couple of them for me? No, not a bad, not bad. Right here. Here, now, use this pan. Oh, oh there's yeah. the knife's in the drawer beside you. Oh, I see. Oh, this no, one? not the butcher knife, oh. Chris. Here, now, this one. Oh, I see. That'll be better. Well, now, uh, about my coming to Powder Creek, Rick. 
I, I just felt it was my bounded duty. You, ma'am? Well, you see, Carrie got married last February. Carrie? My youngest girl, your cousin Carrie. Oh, uh, oh, 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 cousin Carrie. She uh. was almost 30. And I was beginning to wonder whether she'd ever get a... Well, she finally found herself a real nice man. Yes, he works for the Santa Fe Railroad Company. Oh, got me a train ticket at half price. Uh-huh, is that so? Oh. Well, anyway, after she left home, that meant my family was all taken care of. My immediate family, that is. Uh-huh. And then I got to thinking about you. My only brother's son. All alone with nobody to look after you. Well, I've been getting along all right, Aunt Em. Now, don't you try to tell me that. If ever I saw a man that needed a woman to take a hold of him, why, those clothes you're wearing are a disgrace. Oh, yes, these are... Well, I was going to buy some new ones today. Well, if they was washed and ironed and mended proper, you wouldn't be needing new clothes all the time. A wife, that's what you really ought to have. But I suppose you're like the rest of the Ponsets. Put off everything until the last minute. Mm, well, I... Oh, I going know. it alone is expensive, Fred. Oh, I'm not saying the two can live as cheap as one. And I don't want you to get the idea that I expect you to support me. Well, it's never even crossed my mind. Oh, no, indeed. I've still got some of the money your Uncle George left. And my boys both send me a little bit from time to time. <laughs> I don't imagine we'll have any finance problems, Fred. Well, you see, Aunt Em, I'm signed up with the Bar Y, and I'm sorry, but I, I just can't very well stay on here in town with you. Well, there are other jobs besides ranching. Well, it's about all I'm good for. Oh, fiddlesticks. I've had a talk with Mr. Allington at the bank. He says he'll give you a position the minute you say the word. Oh, for Pete's uh, me what in a me work in a bank? Oh no, Aunt Em, I in a bank. I wouldn't know the first thing about it. Oh well, now that don't seem to bother Mr. Allington. He was real pleased with the idea. Said it would probably cut down some of his losses having you as an employee. Ooh, what's the matter, Britt? Oh, I'm gonna sort of nick my finger a little bit. None serious. Oh, here, here, you can use this piece of rag for a bandage. It's clean. Oh, no, Aunt You don't want to get blood poisoning, do oh, you? No, Go ahead all... now, tie it on. All right, all right, all right, all right. Then you'd better let me finish those potatoes. If you're peeling them, there wouldn't be enough left to cook. Well, uh, you see, what I'm getting at, Aunt Em, is, well, I'm not the stay-and-put type of man. I'm sort of used to being on the move. You understand? Brit, Ponsus, it's high time you lit someplace. Oh, I've heard about you and that gun of yours all the way back to Kansas. It's a wonder to me you haven't been shot up half a dozen times by now. At least if those stories folks tell are true. Well, the stories probably did some growing on their way east. I'll bet I know one thing you don't. They've even got a title for you back there. Oh? Mm-hmm. The Six Shooter. That's what they call you. No. As if the name of Ponset wasn't good enough. Oh. Well, don't you feel too bad about it, dear. After we live here in peace and quiet for a spell, everybody will forget all about those escapades of yours. Uh-huh. Now, Aunt Emma, there's just something I've got to explain to you, and I, I want you to understand that oh, I... Oh, Chris. Uh, I know what you're trying to say. You think I'm making a big sacrifice in, in coming here and setting up a home for no, you. No, no, no. Not it's exactly. No sacrifice, no. Brad. No, indeed. And it's it's not just a feeling of duty either. The plain truth is, I I wanted to come. Oh. Uh -huh. It's kind of hard to put into words, but well, after George died, I still had the children to keep me busy. But now, now there's no one, no one but you. I guess I'm the kind of person that just has to have somebody to worry over. Must be my nature. And I'm only 60, Britt. I ought to be able to run a house for a good ten years yet. The Ponsets are long-lived as a rule. Oh, sure, sure. So I... I just don't know what I'd have done if, if there hadn't been somebody I could be of use to. Uh, I guess you're kind of a godsend, Britt, if... It looks like I need you more than you need me. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, I reckon we both need each other, Adam. Well, 
I made out about as well as could be expected that first night I stayed with Aunt Anna. I wasn't exactly what you'd call comfortable. The bed was too darn soft for one thing. And it wasn't easy getting used to having another person around all the time. Leastways, it, it wasn't easy getting used to Aunt Emma. She, uh... Oh, I I knew she had my best interest. Brett Ponsett, you eat the rest of those turnips. They're good for you. And that... Uh... Oh, before I forget it, don't you think you ought to see about getting a haircut? It's hanging way down the back of your neck. And whenever she asked me to do something, well, I, I sure didn't have any right to object. They were things that had to be done. And uh, a sack of flour, a spool of number 60 white thread, and some empty fruit jars. I think I'll put up some of that rhubarb out in the garden. Looks real nice to me. And as for the advice she gave me, well, it was probably good advice. Well worth listening to. I just don't see why you can't try working at the bank, Britt. If you don't take to it, you can always quit. I'm not saying that you have to keep on with it for the rest of your life. Well, after a week, I knew that I couldn't go on much farther, so... And when Dan Porterfield came in, I told him I'd be back the ranch by the end of the month. But I sure didn't know how I was going to manage it. I just, uh, I just couldn't leave Aunt Em, not without hurting her. She, she just needed somebody like me to fuss over her. And, and, uh, there wasn't anyone else who seemed to fit the bill. At least nobody... At least... Nobody I could think of right off hand. Yeah. Here's the last of it, Britt. Coffee, salt, bacon, cook material. It's all in it. Yeah, that's all, Ethan. <laughs> I'll say one thing. You sure surprised me, Britt. I don't see why. Well, I do. I figured you wouldn't stay on with your aunt not more than two, three days at the very outside. <laughs> but by Jiminy, it's, it's over a week now, ain't it? Oh, no, it hasn't been a week, but... It... Oh, it couldn't be that long. By George, it is a weekend. Well, the time sure does fly when a man's contented and satisfied. You know? huh? Ethan, I'm going to let you in on a little secret. You, you remember the other day when you first told me Aunt Emma was in town? Mm, sure. Well, sure. now, the, the truth of the matter is I was kind of upset. I, I didn't exactly welcome the idea. <laughs> it ain't no secret, Britt. I guess I know how I'd feel was I in your place. Well, that's just it, Ethan. I, I never realized... What I've been missing all these years. What are you talking about? I want to tell you that I wouldn't give up living with Aunt Em for all the gold in California. In the first place, she's the finest cook that ever lived. Why, her hot biscuits alone is enough to make your mouth water. And that isn't the half of it. She takes care of all my clothes. You, know, I, I can put on a clean pair of socks every day if I have a mind to do it. No. A clean pair every single day if I want to. Mm. But the best part of it is that, that I'm not lonely anymore. Gosh, it sure is nice to have somebody to talk to and to play casino with in the evenings. Huh? Of course, I know none of this sounds appealing to you, Ethan, but gosh, I, I sure hope I never have to go back to living alone. Well, uh, see you later. Huh? Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. I'll be seeing you, Britt. <laughs> You forgot to get a wick for the lamp. Oh, yes, guess it did. It was sort of slipped my mind. You sure aren't much good at remembering things. Oh, well, I'll go back uptown and pick one up. It'll only take Oh, never mind, never mind. We can do without until tomorrow. Better get your hands washed, son. Supper will be ready in a little bit. Yes, ma'am. Uh, by the way, I, I had a little chat with Ethan Green River this afternoon. That's nice. You know, he... he I kind of feel sorry for him. He's he, living alone, and nobody to care whether he comes or goes and all that. Well, by his own choice, I'm sure. Yeah, uh, I'm just, uh, well, I, I was just thinking, maybe we could have him over to supper one night. Oh. Well, now, Britt, I'm not as young as I used to be, and getting on food for company, that, that's kind of an effort. Oh, but it wouldn't have to be anything special. And besides, it might be nice for you and Ethan to sort of get together, uh, to sort of uh, a little, get a little better acquainted. And... You don't think I'd so much as look at another man after your Uncle George, do you? I'm surprised. Oh, no, no, I, I didn't mean anything like that. Well, um, I should hope not. Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, 
No, the fact is, Ethan is kind of spoken for in a way. You don't say. Oh, yes, oh, yes, yes. Maud Hinsdale. She's got her eye on him. Hinsdale? Hinsdale, yes. You know, the soprano in the church choir, the screechy one. Oh. Oh, yes, yes. yes. And come to think of it, somebody was telling me Maud was sort of worried about you when you first showed up. She was afraid another widow might give her some competition for Ethan. And she's been having trouble enough landing him as it is, you know. Well, she needn't have concerned herself. Oh, she's not concerned now. Uh, not that she's seen you. What? No, at least that's the story I got. I... Well... For Maud Hinsdale's information, I've had plenty of chances to remarry since your uncle passed on. Oh, sure you have, Annie. I'm sure you have. And now that you mention it, tomorrow night might be a very good time to have Mr. Green River over for supper. I was planning on chicken and dumplings, and there'll be plenty for three. Well, now, you're sure you it won't mean too much work for you? Oh, what's a little work, Britt. This is your home as much as it is mine. Your friends are always welcome. Oh, fine, fine. Anna. That's, that's real generous of you. Oh, I, I won't be able to eat again for a month of Sundays, Miss Bancroft. That's all there is to it. Oh, now, Mr. Green, yes, the truth. there's another whole apple pie we haven't even touched. Uh, I thought with two strong, healthy men like you, one pie wouldn't be near enough. Oh, no, please, not another mouthful. Oh, well, uh, if you're absolutely certain I can't tempt you tomorrow at anything, I guess I might as well clear off the table. Uh, can I help you, Anne Anne? Why, Fritz, you know I don't like anybody in my kitchen. You two just go in the parlor and enjoy yourself. <laughs> I'll be long in a minute. Uh, Yes, Sir Britt. You wasn't exaggerating one little bit. That aunt of yours is just about the finest cook I ever come across. Ah, it's my nice of you to say that, <laughs> Ethan, considering that this is just a sort of a plain, ordinary, run-of-the-mill supper. It's about like what we get every night. No. Oh, yes, oh, yes. Sunday dinner, now, there. That's when she really puts herself out. Oh, dear. Oh, oh yes, yes, that's Sunday. Uh, well, I see, uh, you don't suppose you can manage to get me an invite to one of her Sunday meals, do you, Britt? Mm, no, I don't know. Oh, no, 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 look, Britt, I, I'd sure appreciate it. I, yeah, uh, I, well, I can't promise anything, but I'll do my best. Do my best. Well, for the next ten days or so, Ethan was practically a steady boarder at Aunt Emma's. And he sure did put it away, too. Aunt Emma didn't seem to mind. She said she liked to see a man enjoy his food, and Ethan more than obliged her. I tried to leave them alone as often as I could, but as far as I could tell, their friendship just didn't seem to be progressing past the dining room table. Uh, looked like I'd just have to sort of give Ethan a little touch of spur. So one evening after a fair of sauerkraut, while... Adam was out in the kitchen doing the dishes. Oh, you got to let my belt out another notch. That's all there is to it. Uh, 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 Ethan. Yeah? Uh, uh, there's something I've been meaning to ask you. You're right ahead, Brit. Well, now, right you know I'm Aunt Emma's only relative. Uh-huh. In Powder Creek, that is. Yeah. Uh, she's sort of my responsibility. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, what I'm getting at is your intentions... My what? Your, your intentions about Emma. Oh, 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 oh. I, I see what you're driving at now, Britt. Uh, well, y- you don't have anything to worry about. I don't? No, no. I, I won't deny I'm real fond of Emma, and it's more than just a cooking, too. Under other circumstances, well, I, I might even consider asking her to marry me. Other circumstances? Yeah, well, you, you, you told me how you'd feel if anything happened to upset this little home you've got here, and... I'd be the last man in the world to cause you any misery, Brett. Why, you're one of my closest friends. Now, now, just hold on here a minute. No, look, but you can take my word for it. You and Emma can live on here together just as long as you've a mind to. And I won't do a thing to interfere. But I'd like you to interfere. Huh? I, I, if, if you want to marry Aunt Emma and she wants to marry you, you'd be doing me a favor. No. No, Britt, I just won't let you make such a sacrifice. A sacrifice? Yes, that's just what it is, a sacrifice. All right, Ethan. You can believe whatever you like, but I've made up my mind. I'm not staying here in Powder Creek. 
I'm heading back to the bar Y the first thing in the morning, and after I'm gone, Aunt Em will be all alone here, all alone, unless you plan to do something about it. Well, I guess I really wouldn't have gone through with it, leaving Aunt Em, I mean. But I was pretty sure that Ethan really liked her. And all he needed was a little prod. Well, uh, a big prod. Anyhow, I got Scar out of the barn and rode around for an hour or so. But when I came back to the house, Ethan's buggy was gone. Oh. It was maybe... Maybe he hadn't proposed at all, or maybe she turned him down. Huh? Well, only one way to find out, and that's go inside. What happened to you, Brid? Oh, well, I, I just wanted to give Scar a chance to stretch his legs. Oh. Mm-hmm. I thought maybe you were giving Ethan a chance to propose to me. Uh, oh, he asked you to marry him? Well, that was the general idea. I see. Uh, you uh, turned him down, huh? Is that what you thought I'd do? Well, I was afraid you... I mean, I... I, I figured you'd be worried about... What would happen to me? That was all. I... I'm not the least bit worried about what'll happen to you, Britt Ponsett. Why? Why, I've known since the first week you moved in here that it just wouldn't work out. It's clear as day that you and that horse of yours aren't going to be happy unless you're roving around somewhere, bedding down without a roof over your head. Oh, I saw those blankets of yours on the floor. I know how you've been sleeping. Well, I... Yes. I... It appears to me that there are some men who take to being looked after and cared for, and there are some who just don't. Huh. That's why I agreed to marry Ethan. You accepted him? Of course I did. He's the kind of man who'll take to being looked after. Well, I hope you're right, Aunt Em. I sure hope you're right. <laughs> And you know she was? She was 100% right? Why, the next time I came through Powder Creek to visit Aunt Em and, and uh, Uncle Ethan, well, well, sir, he was just about the most married man I ever saw. And so help me, he seemed to enjoy it, too. Well, of course, maybe when I'm his age, I, well, well, I guess I'd don't need to start worrying about it now. The Six Shooter is a transcribed NBC Radio Network production in association with Review Productions. It is based on a character created by Frank Burt and is written by him. Mr. Stewart may currently be seen in the Universal International picture, The Glenn Miller Story. Others in the cast were Eleanor Audley and William Johnstone. Special music for this program was by Basil Adlam, and the entire production is under the direction of Jack Johnstone. All characters and incidents were fictitious, and any resemblance to actual characters or incidents is purely coincidental. By the way, you'll be interested in knowing that the sick shooter has been chosen for broadcast to our men overseas through the facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Services. This is John Wall speaking. Tonight, play Truth or Consequences with Ralph Edwards on the NBC Radio Network.